Hello world, Imran here. Nowadays it is rare to see any remarkable change in the tech world, let alone witnessing something which could be revolutionary. However, Apple Silicon M1 processor might be just that. If any of you who don't know what M1 chip from Apple is, then probably you are the lucky one to be out and enjoying life than living within the four walls. For the rest of us, well, it is a big news but not new anymore. The latest PC processor by Apple for its Mac line. It's an ARM-based system on chip with 8 CPU, 8 GPU, Neural Engine and D2 chip integrated with 8 GB or 16 GB of RAM. Now, 8 CPU core is divided into 4 high performance and 4 high efficiency cores. It contains 16 billion transistors and able to run 11 trillion operations per second. This feat was achieved by Apple engineers and designers by designing the world's first commercial 5 nanometer PC chip, which is manufactured by TSMC in Taiwan. But this achievement was not an overnight success for Apple. There is a long history of Apple with ARM and this chip is a result of years of trial and error. Apple started designing its own chip almost a decade ago. Apple's Bionic A series processor were improving leaps and bounds and its latest Bionic A14 was launched in September 2020 and it is also a 5 nanometer processor. M1 is a great system on chip with some insane performance boost over its competitors and is ready to disrupt the market big time. However, it is not all fairyland tale here. We as buyers have to compromise on a few features as the price for owing this marvel. M1 provides no option to upgrade the system down the road, so you get what you initially buy and live with it. Kind of sucks, but that's Apple. Though, if you are a light user, then even entry-level Mac Mini or MacBook Air is more than what you would ever need. If you are a moderate user with light gaming and office slash college work, then you might like to go for a high-end Mac Mini or high-end MacBook Air or entry-level MacBook Pro. In case you are a content creator, video editor, sound editor or in do any sort of task intensive work, I would suggest going for MacBook Pro high tier as that will provide you better performance due to extra RAM, fans and large storage options. Performance comparison. Now, this is the juicy part. Trust me, it is the most confusing news. Apple came out with a bag showcasing the M1 and comparing it with we do not know what best PC in its segment. What does that even mean? What is the best PC? Is it the best powerful PC or best selling PC or the PC in the same price range? So I did what I do best, real life comparison. You guys might have already seen a ton of comparison. So I will go straight to the results. I have divided the test into two categories. Price range and processor level. Price range is where M1 really shines as there is no other laptop or even probably desktop which can match the power and footprint of M1 chip at the lowest cost of US$699 for Mac Mini and US$999 for MacBook Air. The performance output is simply insane. You're getting more performance per dollar you spent. However, if you go to Indian market, which is arguably the next big market for Apple, suddenly it is not that cheap due to India's heavy and questionable taxation policies. It costs 64,900 Indian rupees for Mac Mini and 92,900 Indian rupees for MacBook Air, which converts in USD as $875 for Mac Mini and $1,252 for MacBook Air. Why might go for MacBook Pro in the States? A little up than that. So, if you guys are going to buy a new laptop in the mentioned price range and do not mind Apple's ecosystem, then there's no better option than Mac and M1. Please mind that there are some Macs with Intel chips still in the market. Try to avoid them. Now, if we must talk about the processor's components, then it's need to be the best from Apple, that is M1, and against the best of the rest. That would be Intel's i9-10980HK and AMD's Ryzen 9 4900H. Well, no surprise, M1 is underdog here. i9 and Ryzen 9, both are monsters and ready to swallow M1 anytime. But M1 is still giving a serious fight here. Let's get into the geek bench scores. We have our processors, we will be reading their single core score and multi core score. So, Apple M1, Intel Core i9-10980HK, that is 10th generation, AMD Ryzen 9 4900H, that is Ryzen 4000 series. Single core score for Apple, 1687, very good score. Intel Core i9, 
0.1354. Whoa, that is 20% less than Apple M1. AMD Ryzen 1235. That is 27% lower than Apple. Let's go to multiple. Apple M1 7433. Very good scores. Intel Core i9 9038. There is the lead with 22% higher than Apple. AMD Ryzen 8891. That is 20% higher than AMD. Very close to Intel. So, the multi core score, certainly Intel and AMD are better. Now, let's see what current technology these processors are employed. Apple M1 is 5 nanometer chip, latest and greatest. Core i9 is 14 nanometer technology, cran per generation. AMD Ryzen is with 7 nanometer. It's better than i9, but it's still it's an old technology. Now, what's the future technology they're going to employ? M1 is going towards 3 nanometer. In a couple of years, really great. We would love to see what they will bring to the table with that technology. Intel is going towards 10 nanometer. Not that great, but some improvement. AMD will be catching up with Apple with 5 nanometer, but it still will be lacking behind. So, Intel and AMD both are doing good here, but they still lost to M1, in my opinion, because M1 beats them in single core score and is heck cheaper. As any laptop with a mentioned Intel or AMD processor will cost you both of your kidneys. So what does it all mean in real life? Better, cheaper, reliable, faster, and futuristic product. All that a buyer asks for. I cannot believe that Apple has indeed pushed the envelope with M1 and kept the price same with a tremendous performance increase over its competitors in the same price range or even in better. Now one can go for heavy duty tasks or MacBook like editing, creating, even gaming at a price range which was not possible earlier and with an Apple logo. Well, that is niche. I feel sorry for anyone who bought MacBook Air or MacBook Pro earlier this year with the Intel processor. I would recommend them selling and buying new if you have the option in time. As the market will be riddled with M1 Mac soon and the resale value of Intel will take a serious dip. As far as for new buyers, if you have the budget and option to buy M1 Macs, do not even think about Intel. It's not worth the performance gap. Now M1 is the first of its generation and as we all know the first is really the best and certainly not in the world of Apple. They will come out with M1 X or M2 and M3 and with better performance and features. I never thought that I will ever say this but a 14 Bionic and M1 chip majority of people with a required budget will go for Apple even with Apple's locked ecosystem because it provides them all they could ever ask for, sometime even more. But there will be people like me who will always rebel and keep trying all that is under the eternal blue sky. And one last thing, subscriptions and likes are for free. Just smash those buttons. See you all in the next one.